taking your calcium supplements wrong? You may be. Here's what you need to know. I'm Sarah Heiner, president of Bottom Line Publications, and this is our conversation with the experts, where we get the answers to your tough questions from our leading experts. Today, I'm speaking to Dr. Andrew Rubman, a leading naturopathic physician and the medical director of the Southbury Clinic in Southbury, Connecticut. Dr. Rubman is also a long-term contributing medical editor to Bottom Line. So welcome, Andy. It's great to see you. Hi, Sarah. All right. So calcium, probably one of the basic supplements that people have been taking forever. And yet a recent study showed that women that were supplementing calcium had a 30% increase of heart attack. So what? Is calcium suddenly wrong? Is calcium suddenly bad? Or are they doing something wrong? The latter. They're doing something wrong. Number one, it's important to understand that calcium is one of the macronutrients, which means we can't take it by a pinch, we have to take it by the spoonful. It should be present in diet. Number two, it always needs to be paired with magnesium. Just as magnesium should never be taken by itself, calcium should never be taken by itself. And why is that for calcium? Because magnesium determines the rate of uptake of most forms of calcium from the GI tract. So if you're just taking calcium without the magnesium, Chances are it'll be in one end and out the other. Well, or is it going in one end and then just being absorbed into the system? Not usually. As we age, it becomes more and more difficult to absorb calcium. One of the problems is stress or acid suppressants. Most forms of calcium require a robust amount of hydrochloric acid in the stomach to be chelated. And unless it's chelated, it won't be properly absorbed. So what happened in that research that showed that taking calcium increased heart attack. I believe that the research study was improperly designed. If the calcium that was used in the research was supplied in a way that it would have been dietarily matched with magnesium, an environment where there was sufficient amounts of vitamin D with people who are otherwise fundamentally healthy, that the research results would have turned out differently. So how were they doing it in the study and where did it go wrong? I believe that they were doing it in the study as a simple calcium supplement mm -hmm. rather than a calcium magnesium supplement. They weren't checking the status of vitamin D in the people. They also weren't making sure that the people had an adequate protein intake and adequate stomach hydrochloric acid for it to be processed properly. So then you would say, so why did it cause issues with the heart? My guess is that because it was improperly processed before it was uptaken, that it contributed to inflammation within the heart and caused a certain amount of uh, restriction in blood flow around the heart. All right, so when you talk about people needing to have adequate levels of vitamin D, mm -hmm. you talk about them needing to have adequate levels of stomach acid to be able to process the calcium. Most people don't, either of those cases. So what does somebody need to do if they're supplementing calcium in order to be sure that it is absorbed? They need to supplement it in conjunction with magnesium, usually a two to one ratio. Calcium to magnesium, twice as much calcium to one. Correct. Okay. They need to take additional vitamin D, most of us do. We were wrong 10 years ago to say that just sunlight exposure would do it for most. That's an important issue. And in terms of the stomach acid, I believe that most people 40 years of age or more need to be taking digestive enzymes and that will cure issues with stomach acid. Remember, there's no such thing as excess stomach acid in medicine. So for all those people that are taking acid suppressing medications, is it adequate if they take calcium with magnesium and supplement vitamin D, will that be adequate to get the absorption of the calcium? Probably not. They need to take it in a different form. If they really have their heart set on staying on that medication, they need to take a calcium and magnesium supplement, which is the salt of butter fat. That's absorbed in a special pathway the way it is, the same way as it's absorbed from mother's milk in the very, very young infant. And what's the salt of butter fat? Butter fat is an organic acid, butyric acid. When you make a salt of it, it goes from butyric to butyrate. So you want to take a calcium, magnesium butyrate. A different form of supplement. Right, and that is absorbed even if you have no stomach acid present. Is there any reason other than bones that people should be supplementing calcium? 
Absolutely. It's very useful in many different areas. It helps in the conversion of tryptophan into serotonin. It helps to promote normal reflex activity in the smooth muscles, so everything from blood pressure to digestion. And it also helps with mood and temperament, as we would expect from serotonin's effect. It's used in many, many different areas in the body, and it's one of those things that we oftentimes overlook. So should everybody be supplementing calcium? Or paying better attention to the calcium in their food. But many people are sensitive to dairy, which is usually looked at as being the best source of calcium, and so a lot of supplementation of calcium is well justified. So if you don't eat dairy or you can't tolerate dairy, what mm -hmm. other food sources are there for calcium? There are sources in the grain community and the legume community that will contain certain amounts of calcium, but your best bet is to try to find some kind of dairy source that you can reasonably tolerate. There are some people who are actually lactose intolerant, and so the lactase dairy protein uh, products are good, but there are other people that can do better on goat and on sheep dairy products where they would have a problem with cow's milk, they wouldn't have a problem with those. Gotcha. All right. Thank you, Dr. Andy. The bottom line on calcium, it's still good for you, no matter what the recent headlines say. It does far more than strengthen your bones, and virtually everybody should be taking it. But you have to take it right. You need to take calcium with magnesium to be sure that it's absorbed properly into your body. And the form of calcium that you should take is actually calcium butyrate because in that way it'll be absorbed even if you don't have enough stomach acid. And so many people that are on acid suppressants will not be able to absorb calcium without taking it in that form. This is Sarah Heiner with Bottom Line.